Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's a girl cranky garabo. I apologize if you don't like eating me eating in front of you. I have to do that. Because I'm breaking a fast and it's half past eight already and I haven't been getting my fruit in, so let's just put that out there. Um uh, also it's raining outside and so it's gonna be loudish the atmosphere around have mercy on me because it is what it is it's rain there's nothing I can do okay I hope you're good I hope you're peachy I hope you're Stella and I hope you're in a neat little bunch mm-hmm I hope you're spectacular wow mm. Everything tastes so good when you're hungry. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Mm. You know, I didn't sign up to be an exorcist. Even when I came to Christ, I wasn't trying to be an exorcist. I was just trying to be a Christian. But now, I am supposed to be an exorcist. Okay. Just casting out devils everywhere. That is not sustainable as a society. Let me put some caveats out there. Mm -hmm. Caveats. Please look out for my captions. They may be inaccurate. Sometimes they use a small G for God, so they're not very reverent. I'm not really a big fan of that, but... There is really nothing else I can do. Mm -hmm. Whoops, actually, no, there is something I can do. I just choose not to do it because it's literally too much work okay uh, so we're just gonna leave them there because they're cute maybe one day in the future I'll change them if there is a future but at this point it does not appear that there is okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes wow that was delicious okay anywho uh, yeah I also might be wearing application makeup for those of you that are ever so slightly concerned, see, I told you, don't play with a sister. I'd be out there singing South Blog Tango. If you give me grief, because look at the way that I'm holding this strawberry. Okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. It's a joke. Okay. And she knows it's not. Okay, like moving on. I may or may not be wearing makeup. If I am, you'll see because it's bouncing up and down. We don't really know what's going on there. But I'm not sure. Hmm. Mm. I am not shape shifting. Uh, okay. Uh, wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Guys, thank God for what little you have when you ain't got Jack. Because it's worth it. I'm thankful for these strawberries. Ah! Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't really have much else, okay? Alrighty, what else? Um. Ah! I have a segment. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm only human after all. So please don't be taking jabs and shots at me. When you prick me, I bleed. Evidence is a booyah over there, all. Amen. That's evidence that if you slap me, I might just be like, ow! Because I actually get hurt. So don't know why nobody out there in these streets trying to prevent my heartbreak. Guys, you know, it's important to open fruit in the center because every so often you encounter maggots. But you know, people don't really see that that way. They don't. They just be out there on some grabbing a whole apple on some. Yeah. You will eat a worm. You will eat a worm. And I'm speaking from experience, okay? When I was a kid, I cut up an orange in half by the mercy and the grace of God. 
And there were maggots in the middle. <laughs> Yo -ho and then when I was all grown up, I peeled a, a tangerine like a narchi. And there were maggots inside. I don't know how they got there. But there were maggots. And I, it was in the office. I screamed on top of my voice. My colleagues laughed at me. But the reason why that happened is because there were maggots in the center. So y'all do not just eat fruit. I am warning you. You'll find animals in the middle. Okay. Anyway. Mm -hmm. This rain is going to distract me. But it's written in God's word. Mm -hmm. That the lazy man says that there's a lion in the street and so does not go out to work. Amen. Mm. 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 They see that there is a lion in the street and so they don't go out. So this rain is like a lion. Either way, I'm going to work. That's what's good. Yum, yum, yum. What? No. Mm. We're about to go through the tribulation. You're about to go through the tribulation. I hope I didn't drink my home over there. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. So this is going to seem insensitive in the tribulation. Me eating in front of you. <laughs> But I warned you, didn't I? Because y'all are going to be dealing with that black horse out there rocking up with some famine. Quarter wheat for a denarius. Do not harm the oil and the wine. Quarter wheat for a denarius. Do not harm the oil and the wine. Quarter <laughs> mm. But we will have told you guys, right? In the run-up, you didn't listen to us. I had such a gangster dream. <laughs> Guys, mm -mm -mm. it was horrible. It was horrible. It was horrible. Who else does not sing when they're eating? Guys, when food is good, it's good, it's good. Can't help it, eh? Break out into a melody. Or <laughs> two. Amen. Now that's how you eat a peach, a pear. Don't be leaving too much behind. Because there's some starving people in this world. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, even of affection. Just saying, just saying. Anyway. Yeah, guys. It's going to be a terrible time in the tribulation. So when I'm eating in front of you right now, it's like really not trying to rub it into your eyes or whatever. Because... Like here in La Cie, there's no maggot. You gotta be safe. I'm not trying to rub it into your eyes, this peach. Bottom line is, when I'm doing this video, you're all really very fat. You are chubby. You are monstrously chubby. You're obese. You actually need to lose weight because one of these days, this heart attack is gonna walk all over you. You're gonna be out here walking around with a heart attack, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you can't stop chewing all of those donuts. You don't even find what I'm eating worthy of eating because you prefer the donuts. So you're currently fat. So I'm not insensitive. But you are going to be skinny maling kidding kidding skinny maling kidding. I love you. By the time you watch this video, because <laughs> you're funny. So delish. Mm -mm -mm. so delish okay you're gonna be skinny by the time you watch this and i'm sorry that this is causing you to get like teary eyed and stuff haha <laughs> now that it's a quarter wheat for a denarius and a day's wages for a loaf of bread i'm sorry i'm sorry do not harm the oil and the wine because mm. it's clear people are manifesting demons like no man's business you stand in the presence of a christian for five seconds and they see you like what do you want with us, son of man? Eh? Hey. Mm hmm? Hmm? But instead of it being just one guy in a cave, 
It's literally your whole family. It's literally your whole classroom. It's literally the whole office. It's literally the whole bus. It's literally the whole queue at the taxis. Out here manifesting in the presence of a Christian. That's what's happening in 2024. Four, 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 not three. By the way, it's the 9th of February 2024. Say hello. Because you're going to wish you were alive in this 9th of February to hear this message. Because then you stay dead, unfortunately. In your trespasses and sins. And then we went to heaven. Boo! And you were like, whoa. Guys, please, let's talk, okay? Let's have a discussion. Whoa. Uh. Oh, that had to happen. I apologize. I don't have decorum. It's the tribulation. Ain't nobody got time to be looking out for people's burps and farts proper. When you're running away from bombs, girl. A burp gonna be your best friend. Okay, listen. Mm. No. Jesus, when he was casting out devils and stuff. Yeah. Mm hmm. Whenever he encountered some severely like demon possessed people, they fell on the floor and stuff like that. Or they came to him on some. What do you want with us? We are legion. It was rare. I'm sorry. Can't help but dance. I'm gonna dance with somebody. I'm gonna feel the beach with somebody. Oh, I wanna dance with somebody. With somebody to eat a peach with. Oh, no, no, no. I apologize. Oh, the human and it was rare. Mm hmm. Cause it's finger looking good. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mm. Yeah, I stole that KFC. Don't come at me. I'm not suable. I ain't got no money. She gave me money. When I'm in <laughs> Guys, it was rare. Demon possession was rare. I'm just saying. The Bible is not littered all across it. When people are just approaching, approaching Christ on some What do you want with us? It was rare. <laughs> <laughs> When Christians are like dinosaurs, <laughs> extinct. <laughs> you gonna know what time it is. When Christians are extinct, y'all gonna have to make some new ones like Jurassic Park. Y'all gonna have to innovate a way to hatch some new dinosaurs. Cause you done got rid of the old ones. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, guys. Usually, animals get extinct. People get extinct. Creatures, cause they were endangered in the first place. You know what I mean? Cause they were endangered in the first place. So I mean, y'all made us endangered. Look at me, be all like endangered. <laughs> And then we became extinct. Because <laughs> the rapture happened. Literally, one split second after the rapture, <laughs> every Christian is going to be extinct. Like, yeah, live for the first time in the history of the human race. There will not be a single servant of God on the earth for the first five minutes, maybe the first minute, maybe the first second. There will be absolutely no body filled with the Spirit of God. Just a couple of moments after the rapture. Maybe after five minutes, some people might get down on their knees and be like, Oh, I'm sorry! Jesus! You left me behind! You left me behind! Me? Me? But I was your servant! Okay, fine, fine, fine! I was a fornicator! I was an adulterer! I was a witch! I was a reviler! I was a saboteur! Oh, fine! Save me, please! Oh! Mm -hmm. Then, boo! First Christian on the world ever! After the rapture. Yeah. Second Christian. Third Christian. 
fourth Christian, fifth Christian, sixth Christian. And then next thing there's like a boom, revival. But in the very split seconds after the rapture, you guys, woo! Uh. It's literally going to be like the dinosaurs, the dodos for Christianity. Extinct! I told you guys that this witchcraft of yours is an extinction level crisis. Because the moment you take God's spirit out of the earth, or you persecute God's spirit filled people, you encounter the planet through that which we call an endangering event, an extinction level threat. And then there will finally be an extinction following which there will be a new creation again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seeing as you do not want to conserve Christianity on the earth, <laughs> it's going to be extinct for about five seconds, but it's totally going to be extinct at some point. And on that day, you're going to be like, why? Because there'll still be food immediately after the rapture. <laughs> Why did I listen to Kurobo? Why did I listen to Kurobo? <laughs> this peach is good though. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you buy these pieces? They're so good. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> mm. you saw what to make out of us some dodos, aren't you, in these dreams? We are mammoths now. We are extinguished. Extinguish. Extinguishing event. Oh. So now we like all fire extinguished and stuff. Then only you're gonna get born again. Cause then you're gonna realize you were never saved. <laughs> Don't you want just the crown of my peach? It's so good. I just want to share it like the gospel. But don't nobody want to so it's fine. I'll eat by myself. <laughs> you guys are not serious. Mm? Um, you are living dangerous. Mm. I can tell you. I can take it. I'm sorry, that had to happen. Mm. 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 Extinct. <laughs> And then, boo, rapture happens, and you're still in the choir, chilling on the earth. <laughs> But it's me you were teasing before then. I was the one you was out here teasing, acting like I'm needy, acting like I need you, acting like you gave me money when I'm in need. Ah, I'm gonna go and pass me shade. Oh, ah, shade. Oh, ah, passing me shade. Passing me. Shade. 
Look at them pass me shade Oh, even though there is no sun Seeing as there's no God in your land But you passing me shade Hey, you be passing me shade <laughs> Look at you still be around Even though all the dinosaurs is gone now <laughs> Sense. But like you do with nonsense anyway Look at me be so energetic Cause I don't eat the fruit, I eat the basket Eat the basket, but it's not a biscuit It is a fruit Hey! Okay, we're done Y'all, I'm applying lipstick. It doesn't really matter because you're probably just going to be seeing some makeup. <laughs> some fake lipstick. But I'm putting on the real deal just in case I choose to not put on makeup. I choose just in case you are sitting there wondering what's going on. I be a Lazarus. <laughs> I be a Lazarus. What you mean, Carabo? I be a Lazarus. I don't understand. I be a Lazarus. I still don't get it. I be a Lazarus. Why you be a Lazarus? I be a Lazarus. 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 Oh, I don't understand what you mean. I be a Lazarus. I be a Lazarus. Ah, still don't understand why? Because I be the poor lady. You ignore. Well, you be the rich man that I'm like. Oh. Give me the food, give me the food, give me the food, 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 and you be ignoring me until I go to heaven and you die dead. I'll be a Lazarus. Come on. Listen, you. Kia, I'll be a Lazarus. I am out here being a taco as a Lazarus. I'll be a like, you see what I mean? No. I'm dealing with a crazy lady I'll just thoroughly running around in the rain Trying to make me feel like I'm not seen no I told you I be a Lazarus I be a Lazarus I be a Lazarus oh. Because as the Lazarus I'm dealing with a rich man Trying to abuse him oh. When I started over here And come communicate about how it is That all over the ecosystem There's going to be More demonic manifestation than we can take in our stride I be a Lazarus I be a Lazarus Dealing with a rich man oh. But I am grateful that at least a person that go manifest so bad is not in a position to do anything to change my life. I'm just sitting here doing the work of Christ. It's pouring down rain on the outside world. It is pouring down heavy and hard. And this person is prepared to stand outside and come and harass me for no reason. It is called the Cain. It is called the Abel. It is called the destruction of the body of Christ. Except just before they are done finishing we are gonna be in the sky so I be a Lazarus I die and I go to have one but she I be the rich man die and go to hell ain't nobody treat me like this before until my older sister come and live with us eh? it is pouring down rain on the outside world and yet she don't care to get drenched wet why because I be a Lazarus and she be the rich man and for whatever reason and purpose she desire she's going to go and afflict me She's in the house now, I could tell, because I could hear the burglar proofing closing. Closing. What needs to be comprehended is that if I don't do that, if I don't walk around the house, basically, like Cindy Lopa, hey, that's what's good. Girls, we wanna have fun. Oh yeah, we wanna have fun. Girls just wanna.
wanna have fun Oh yeah, we wanna have Hey now, hey now What's the matter with the girl That don't want me to have fun now Oh hey now If I don't walk around the kitchen like that If I don't walk around the kitchen Having plugged in this earphone into my cell phone device that always has to stay plugged into a charger because the phone that I'm recording on right now does not have a little pluggy hole my thingy bobby in it yeah it doesn't have that so I have to use a phone that always keeps dying so I walk around with a charger plugged in like a whole lengthy charger and I like hammer it into the kitchen and wash dishes with it and on top of that I can't be quiet I can't just listen to hey now hey now what's the matter with the girls that just want to have fun now mm, I can't just listen to it quiet that's what's good and wash the dishes she raps on and calls me worthless like I'm nothing like I'm useless like, like I'm the scum of the earth she's Cain and I'm able she just goes and goes and talks about how I don't make a single like ounce of money I don't pay no bills where she doesn't either that's why she's not currently living in her own house She's living in my mother's house because she lost her house. That's what's good. So ain't nobody here pay no bills other than my mother. But this human individual manifestation of demons at a level that I have never in my life seen. That's what under heaven happens when you work with the devil like 24 hours a day. So when I go in the kitchen, I gotta rock this whole thing on my face. My mom has literally accepted it. I've been persecuted before by my whole family, but nothing at this level. That's what happens when a person is severely demon possessed because of years of involvement in the occult and repeat returns to the drawing board like over and over when you just keep on going back to the devil to achieve a particular end that every single visit you get more and more demons inside you so this chick literally can not rest when i am doing what i'm doing the work that i do currently i'm fasting so i just broke my fast now you saw me eating all those fruit yeah i'm also prayerful all day long she is heavily demon possessed because of her darkness alongside her alcohol problem so every time i walk in the work of jesus christ or every time i just walk into the room i could have just woken up done nothing in my ear in the kitchen telling me how I'm rubbish now my mom has yelled at me for like ever in a day before and I walk out and she doesn't follow me this chick will follow me in every room she will follow me right here to this mukuku where I stay she will walk around with me just to make me feel like trash it is a manifestation of demons that I am in my life have never seen I've been persecuted for a whole decade and I've never seen anything like what my sister's manifesting. It's on some other level. And there is no coming up for air underneath it. She is Cain and I am able. And if at all, I do not find a way to escape being able and rather find myself in a position of rather being Jacob instead of Abel. In other words, the brother that lives instead of the brother that dies, I'm not going to make it. She nearly, she drove me. She, there's a day when I almost committed, like literally I attempted suicide because of her. And ever since that day, I employed this strategy. Hey now, hey now, what's the matter with the girls? What's the matter with us girls just wanting to have fun now? This thing that I'm doing right now, she hates it with a passion. Every time, sometimes when I'm talking here, you need to understand she will get out of the house without having even heard me speaking because my voice is low or whatever. And she will start meddling around just outside here with bins and everything. Like she will start just moving stuff, banging it against this door. Presently it is raining. Only reason why I can even speak loudly. I can speak on top of my voice when it's raining. When the rain is falling, this, it, it, it what is this? Um, It muffles a lot of sound everywhere. Uh, in the house, it, it's, it, I'm inaudible. I'm inaudible, especially when it is raining. She is so demon possessed that she cannot help but manifest from a, an environment where she has not even been provoked. It's like she is something in her, yeah, voga. The moment I start to do the work of the Lord, anything at all, such that she gratuitously violates me. So when I'm in the kitchen, washing dishes or doing whatever I need to do in the house, using the bathroom. The other day, I tried to use the bathroom, open the bathroom, uh, and she was in there. I mistakenly discovered that she was in there. Okay? Yeah, I discovered that she was in there, and I was like, oh my goodness, whoopsie, and I closed the bathroom door. She started telling my mother how it is that I need to get, what do you call, she scared my cat now. Crying cat, you can't go outside, it's raining too much. Okay? She told my mother that she, she needs to buy me a portable toilet. Then on that day, I will pee in here because the bathroom is not meant for vagrants. That's how my sister treats me. And this manifestation of hers at this height, it wasn't like this when she was here for just one day, two days, three. 
it's gotten worse it's like she cannot go to her own house she cannot go anywhere she's stuck here with us and now the holy spirit of god is burning her demons and because it's burning you can't expect to go outside that's why you want to get out in the rain okay the holy spirit burns her demons right in a way that never burned any of my other family members all throughout these years i've been dealing with quite a lot of persecution from at the hands of my family all this time but nothing at this height nothing at this height and i told my mom when my sister newly moved in here and it's going to burden everybody my mom made a decision to persecute me when i told her that and now in and of herself she has been subjugated to the tyranny of what my older sister is literally every single person in this house is living at the edge of their seats because of her my younger sister was indecisive about moving out she moved out because my older sister moved in she finally decided to get out of home even though she was not 100 percent sure if that's what she wanted to do now she's moved into my younger sister's bedroom and my mother everybody is tiptoeing around her literally everybody my mom is she's brave she's uno kwachis amina she prospers to watches on me in other words she bullies me sometimes my, my mother bullies me i'm scared of her i don't defy her like proper i am scared of her i do not defy her when she speaks i quietly just get out let her finish talking and then i come in and i do exactly what she wants me to do i dot my eyes and i cross my teeth i don't want to get on my mom's bad side i'm funu Graswella, Rasella, my older sister she is defiant in a way that has made my mother something i've never seen her being before essentially scrimmaging in a corner like uh, uh, basically a cornered rodent like you know when you get cornered and there's nothing you can do she has bullied my mom into submission that is how bad the situation is my sister is an alcoholic just like my dad and my mom used to have these wines wines like alcohol that she used for display literally it was decoration it was decoration do you understand no one in this household drinks not me not my younger sister not my mom if my mom if my younger sister drinks we don't know because she does not drink from the house's stash maybe she drinks out there when she's with friends but i've never once smelled alcohol on my little sister and neither have i ever smelled it in her bedroom like her coming back from baba last maybe she doesn't drink and if she does it's quite light she does not have a problem that's what i'm trying to explain to you guys my dad was a prolific alcoholic all the way up until he passed away he could literally guzzle down every last bottle of alcohol in any given environment to a point where you'll be shocked when you come back to discover that in such a short space of time somebody has drunk everything all of it she's taken on that generational curse it's quite unfortunate there was a dad back my, a day back in the day when i was still a kid like we could have been like in grade i could have been like maybe in standard four five very young grade standard four would be grade uh six seven i could have been in like grade six seven my dad and my mom already by then were divorced my dad came over for whatever reason and him and my mom were initially getting along like a house on fire my mother used to have this um i don't know if you guys know those world bars like it's it it, it 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 takes on the shape of a globe of the globe that is the earth and then when you open it in half inside it's actually a bar where you can put like whiskeys and wines and what have you my mother bought that uh bar because it was pretty it was a, a beautiful like aesthetic uh what do you call this like a de decorative uh furniture item in the house uh it was however to bank alcohol inside but one when it's closed you would not know that is to bank alcohol they just look like a globe like that stuff that you can just uh, you know tip like that and it will spin around it also used to spin around but it was a bar for alcohol the top part used to spin around it was a bar for alcohol and my mother every so often entertained guests and so when she would entertain guests she would purchase alcohol for them they would leave some behind and so she made a decision to put it in that bar and i remember that that bar had banked that alcohol and it was not going anywhere it was not moving it was not being touched it was not being drunk for two whole years two whole years since my mother had guests over and that stuff was well she were more guests that came but i'm trying to explain is that there was alcohol that was chilling in that bar untouched entire sealed bottles of whiskey of vodka of uh, yeah name it okay sealed bottles with all the glasses i mean it was a beautiful bar it had compartments to put alcohol in and also places where you would put like whiskey glasses or wine glasses and whatnot mm, yeah there was alcohol that was sitting in there idly doing nothing going nowhere for two years two years so basically from the time when i was in standard three to the time when i was in standard five or when i was in standard two to the time when i was in standard four so from the time when i was in grade four to grade six or grade uh, five to grade seven yeah it was just sitting in that bar untouched decoratively just ornamentally decorating the house nobody was drinking that alcohol my dad came my dad was a deadbeat dad that was absent and every so often he would pop out of the woodworks and visit us 
okay uh and the one time every four years or every two years that he would pop out of the woodworks and rock up and give us money and what have you yeah he used to wreak so much havoc in my mom's life it's not like she he she did not love him it's that she could not be with him she could not be with him she was still obviously in love with him because at some point they were dancing together but like you know when a person spurs up old demons that you are like this is why we got divorced this is why we got divorced my dad rocked up and everybody we loved him so much we were happy he was there he bought us gifts presents gave us money and he was talking well with my mom they were basically in agreement my mom poured him one drink out of he because he asked for it out of that bar and my dad literally finished off all of the alcohol in that one day that one day and for those few hours that he was over he drank all that vodka he drank all that whiskey he drank all those wines he drank all that alcohol literally all of it all of it and it had been sitting there for two years and by the time what actually what made him leave was the fact that my mom kicked him out he was rude he was disrespectful he was mean not only to my mother but to us as children he was just this flagrant drunk that was no longer manageable until my mother kicked him out of the house they had a whole wrestling match with each other even like literally domestic violence on that fiery tip and that was the last time we saw my dad for the next couple of years again to come that's how life was with my dad so i understand i i, I remember i used to pray when i was a kid every single night begging god to bring my parents back together again and i believe that he showed me my dad that day to show me that Garabo, your father and your mother cannot get back together because this is what your household would look like if your mother took your dad back this is what your household would look like i was a kid at the time did not understand much but i i sort of kind of understood god and, and too when i was much older though i realized why it is that god did not answer that particular prayer mm. that situation i will never forget it i will never forget it the next day everything went back to normal but i am pretty sure that everything did not go back to normal for my mom it was probably wounds that were spurred up from long ago she was probably bruised from like literally you know when you're suffering from ptsd but you're trying to deal and cope and you don't want no kids to be seeing no issues that you're going through that's what my mom was experiencing <clears throat> never saw him again for in the next couple of years oh on the same day by the way i told you guys that when i was in primary school i entered yes now i remember it was standard four it was definitely standard four it was grade six i had entered miss um winchester ridge primary and i came in the top five and i had these photos that were taken at my winchester ridge primary competition uh of my modeling there on the stage you know pageantry and what have you and my dad took one of my photos because he promised me that he was going to frame it and then bring it back uh all like enlarged that he was going to blow it up and that he was going to also frame it and i gave my dad that photo those were memories of something that i did when i was a kid that i will never get back i never got that photo back it's lost it's gone it was it was in the woodwork it was just in the miry pit out there in the wilderness so he took my memories of my top five pageant like my miss winchester ridge primary school pageant photos he took a couple of them promised to blow up one and basically just do, do a whole album for me and he said he was going to bring it back and kids being as impressionable as they are i trusted him i believed him and he left with my photos and never came back he left with my photos and never came back so i don't have any remaining memories of miss sir john, miss not, not mr john sorry but miss winchester ridge primary which was my primary school that i went to and that happened because of his alcohol habit he could never be reliable he could never do anything for himself my dad was an extreme uh pro not a professional what do you call this academic he was extremely intelligent he was very very gifted and he was highly educated at some point he used to lecture at this university that's what's good yeah he lost all that by the time his life ended he was at zero hollow note he was absolutely nowhere he had utterly flatlined there was nothing if he was reliant on everybody he was everybody's snare he was everybody's snare he was a judgment on us all even though we did not have him coming he became a burden to everybody at the end of his life everybody was taking care of this drunk that had been a burden to not only my mom and my siblings but also his own family like his sisters his, his like cousins and whatnot everybody was trying to put to push him to everybody else to take care of like when you make an observation of that kind of a generational curse and you walk in it it's like you literally are begging for destruction you've literally got an example to run with my my dad was also exorbitantly rude he was very vitriolic and the reason why he was so full of vitriol is because he was number one at some point in society like uppermost and then he lost everything 
and everybody that was substandard to him everybody that was not as educated as him not as successful as him not as all that jazz all of a sudden grew flourished burgeoned and became loftier than him the only way therefore that he could survive all that loss with him being substandard in comparison to those that he used to hover above at some point was to vitriolically mock them he used to tease people he used to revile people he used to talk down to people like they're nothing individuals that were just quiet listening in listening to him speak these things and so what they would do is just walk out so at some point in the marriage because my mom was obviously the better person in this equation when she was exhausted with everything that was going on he would tease her he would mock her he would talk about how she's not beautiful anymore she's this and that when she was pregnant especially with me she was mocked throughout it all and also um uh, what is this and also accused of being uh what do you call of, of having cheated of infidelity and that the baby in the stomach is not his until it came out looking like him i look like my dad right he's late now that's what's good that's the kind of menace that this man was and my mom was not the first nor last person that he mocked like this when he was on his way down while everybody else was escalating mm. it was his family members and during the time in the season my mom has thrown me like my family members have severely persecuted me and they made me live with him because i could not right. go anywhere else they had rented for him a retirement village and he was in that space as well severely scathing to me he spoke to me like i was the scum of the earth like i was nothing like i was some dropout like i was worthless and he would then also um postulate to me just how it is that he is educated he's got this level of degrees he is better than everybody and he knows all the big fat chunky leaders of this country because indeed he does he grew up with them they were uh, what is this they studied together like some of the biggest and baddest um politicians as well as business like uh, 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 moguls like big fat tycoons in this country my father was studying with them at some point they were his actual friends like very tight and he would then tell me uh, he was in the uh, legal profession so he could today easily be one of the supreme court justices of this country if at all he had not messed up with his life type establishment thing and given that he knew some of the biggest and baddest people in the country he would then go on to name drop and talk about how he knows this person that person that person and i'm nobody i ain't jack i'm like a whole kid and so i've yet to make any networking at all in my whole life i'm yet to meet any big people and all of us are still kids and so i'm yet to also know anyone that's so big that really frankly they're running the country because all of us are still on the come up and he was mocking me for knowing no one important that was my dad like the people that will grab all their accolades and because they are fallen on the ground they will tease everybody else that's just trying to make an honest living everybody else that's just trying to live a regular life everybody else you get my point type of establishment thing my dad was like that i had to just put that out of there so you can understand what kind of a person he was and it's one of the biggest reasons why i wasn't even at his funeral one of the biggest reasons why i just could not care less what happened with him later on he so violated me he so broke the living daylights out of me that i could not deal with the fact that even when i was staying with him he turned his whole family against me and got me yelled at by my aunties and everybody as some derelict kid when they knew he was a wayward alcoholic so he caused the world to mistreat me such that by the time the, his life came to an end all i could tell myself was let, let the dead bury the dead as for me uh, i will follow christ i told you guys that i'm an infj in the worst way i, I door slam i door slam people i shut them out i shut them out when i'm done with them but it takes me a very long time to do that with them right my dad he was basically living like a hobo and i'm the one that took him off the streets when i was employed and then he treated me like trash when i was now in need of some kind of service and support when my sister and my mom were now taking care of him so it wasn't even his own money he turned on me he caused one of his friends that wanted to help me to get my life back together again to second guess me doubt me and basically leave me buried by telling him don't help garabo she's unhelpable there's nothing that can be done for her she's a lost cause this man listened to my dad and ignored me when he was prepared to not only get me out of the squad i was in but set me up in an apartment and get me restarted re-energized just as a favor to his friend and my father told this guy leave her outside in the cold now that you've gotten that context you must gauge why it is that my sister's like this she's exactly my dad she keeps on all over like my ear like no mess like when i'm washing the dishes i want to dance with somebody i want to feel the heat i will listen to whitney houston i will listen to cindy lopa i will listen to adele on the highest volume that my phone can produce in the kitchen and on top of that i gotta sing on top of my voice so i don't hear what she's talking to me so i don't hear what she's saying to me
I like my mom has accepted that I walk around the house with cords all over my body like because there's nothing that she can do to stop my sister from attacking me viciously there's nothing anybody can do my mom is not innocent in the matter in and of herself she's come at me like a ton of bricks but she has never just lingered on me like bubble gum and kept on just yelling and following me around all over the show and the next day she's at it again the next day she's at it like literally with no peace I have never experienced this level of demonic or um what is this manifestation in my entire career as a Christian my entire tenure as a Christian, I have never seen this kind of manifestation ever, ever. It is extreme. And the reason why it is extreme with my sister, even above even my dad, because at least my dad at some point used to leave me alone. It's because my sister over and above an alcohol problem, she also decided to be a witch. Something that my dad wasn't. My father was never into spirits. He didn't dabble. He just drank a whole bunch of booze and that on its own caused so much spiritual oppression inside him. It caused so much spiritual demonic, um, like just a presence, like it, they lodged and they sat onto him and they made it impossible for him to move left or right. But he was more manageable than what this woman is. She decided to go and mix an alcohol problem with witchcraft. And now we are dealing with a monolith that I, for the life of me, do not know how in the world we're going to deal with it. She is a combination of my dad and something else. I told you guys that when kids inherit generational care curses from their parents, they become worse even than their parents. They become worse even than their parents. She has inherited something that is more exorbitant than my dad. Nobody compares to her. Literally, absolutely no one. I've never dealt with this level of demonic manifestation in my entire tenure as a Christian. I'm prayerful. I'm full of fasting. I am consecrated in the worst way. So people are constantly all up in my grill manifesting, but I've never seen anything like that. And I live with it on the same property now. I've never seen somebody this defeatist. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ has come that we may have life and life abundantly. I've never seen somebody that has got a, a, a prototype. Some kind of a historical um, archetype. To, to basically gauge what is the likely outcome of their own future. And still walked in it. Like somebody that is choosing the path of where it is under heaven. That somebody else that died a nobody. My dad owned a boraba to so much that even when he was dying, his family members were impatient with him. Even when he was dying, people were impatient with him. That's how rude he was. That's how hard to manage he was. When somebody is like that and you see them at their death, like you, you literally make an all. She even saw how I had like separated myself from all that. I was the one that prophesied over him and told him that if you don't go and see a doctor, you're going to get diagnosed with prostate cancer because God showed me that that's what's going to happen. And it happened literally like clockwork exactly that way. But two years after I, I saw the prophecy, that's when he got diagnosed, diagnosed with that prostate cancer. But by the time that he got diagnosed with it, he had so violated so very many ecosystems that I wanted nothing to do with him. I wanted absolutely, my sister saw all this. She saw it. She literally saw it all and she saw how it is that I was not there. And she is trying to lose me as well. She is literally working like a dog to lose me. She is trying to get me saying when she passes away because at this rate she's inevitably going to go out. She's trying to get me saying stuff like let the dead bury the dead. As for me, I'm going to follow Jesus. When you burn bridges that violently, that badly, the Lord never intended for us to stick around in the midst of rude folks. That's what you must understand. Long suffering and forbearance is for those who keep on coming back and saying sorry seven times, 70 times, seven times. But people who ain't got no sorry. People who say I'm not, I, I'm not feeling. People who don't even care to get the gospel. When you give them the scriptures, they throw away the plate of food and it lands on the floor, breaking the plate and everything. The Lord never, ever said that we should sit around among, among them. God said that if you go to any town and you give them the gospel and they don't respond appropriately, dust your feet off. It'll be a better day on the day of judgment for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and for Sodom and Tyre than it will be for that town. He never ever said stick around where you are rudely treated. He said if they persecute you in town, flee to the next. So the reason why there is a difference, I guess, between the way that I am with my sister and my mother is because my mother every so often walks in a way so as to suggest, suggest sorry, that she's sorry. She walks in a way that suggests that, okay, I don't want to fight anymore. Peace is just better to walk around in. So every so often we recover and have seasons that stretch where it is that we're not argumentative anymore, where we're not fighting, where there's no bad blood, where there's no strange energy. It's just swimmingly going ahead and then boo, I get attacked again, but then she comes back um, to normalness and then I recover. I get pacified. Indeed, it is written in God's word 70 times, 7 times that you must forgive. But God says, uh, the, basically the question around that is, how many times when somebody 
comes and says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, must you uh, forgive them? That's when Christ says, if somebody comes and apologizes to you 70 times, 7 times, you must forgive them 70 times, 7 times. But then when they're not sorry, when they're out just singing you Beyonce songs, sorry, I ain't sorry, sorry, nah, nah, hell nah. When they're busy singing you bass, I ain't sorry. That's when you ought realize as a Christian that by attrition, you ought not endure yourself through all that rubbish because then you will faint, you will fall away, you will end up walking away from God, you will feel like God is abusive, you will feel like God does not care about you, you literally get to leave an abusive situation. You get to leave without having any blood on your hands as a Christian. The, the, the key here is to recognize a contrite spirit. It's written in God's word that a broken and a contrite spirit God will not despise. But the Lord did not ever intend for God, for children of his, for his Christians to in all of that meekness and that lowliness and that forgiving spirit to just continue to endure abuse at the hands of people who punch you every time you want to make peace. Every time you try to foster peace, every time you try to be a truce maker and they throw away your truce making endeavors. God did not intend for you to just Ride it out until you get massacred, girl. God did not intend for you to just sit in that environment. You get to go. You get to door slam. And that, my sister has only been here like a month and a half. And in that time, she has created so much hostilities in the house that literally everybody is tattooing around to a point where my younger sister moved out. My baby sister, who is 22 years old, would have stayed here maybe another year just to get, make sure her finances are 100% intact. And she decided to move out before she was solidly convicted that I'm, 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 I'm financially secure, I can go. I wouldn't be surprised if she keeps on coming back here every second week to like nick some peaches and some potatoes and tomatoes and some mealy meal and whatnot in order to cook it where it is that she's at because she was not financially secure 100% to move out but she moved out because she moved in. My little sister moved out because my older sister moved in before she was financially secure. She might have stuck around for at least a minimum another year just to make sure that she was okay. Just to make sure that she, she was okay. That's what we're dealing with here. Somebody that literally ain't freaking sorry. She ain't sorry. And before she moved into my mom's house, she kept on telling my mom on the phone when she was arguing with her that I get trying to live in I get trying to live in In other words, I'm funny. I'm not like your two younger kids. I'm not like Karabo and my little sister. Because I'm an esteemed academic and this woman is literally taking for granted the fact that i somehow towards the end of my degree was suddenly ripped out of everything in society and that's the reason why i didn't even finish my degree but she treats me like i'm some mongrel that didn't even want to study like i'm not an academic like she is she uses just like my dad everything that <coughs> that she has that other people don't have to subdue them under herself to crush them and their spirits underneath herself. She she's a mean bugger. She taught and she never used to be like that. This is a demonic manifestation. I remember a time when she was a much better human being. She will throw all of her achievements at everybody now that she's losing everything to a point of mocking my little sister and me. She keeps on talking about us like we're these mongrels that are uneducated, just basically these primates, these natives, these like basic, basic people that can't understand small things. And so for those reasons, my younger sister can't stand her. And so now it appears I'm getting there. God, I mean, when somebody is always just spitting on you, talking about you like you ain't Jack, how come it's a, you know, you're not going to want anything to do with them. You're not going to want anything to do with them. And she not only treats my younger sister and I like that, but every so often she treats my mother too. My mother of which is literally feeding her, has done everything in her power to try and make her existence here very, very comfortable. And nothing is working. Nothing is working. She teases us all. She mocks us all. She is walking in the exact same footsteps as my dad and then some. And then some. She is exactly like my father and then worse. She is Cain and she is going to die alone with everybody fed up with her. And the only people around her are, are around her bedside that will be forced to take care of her when she dies are indeed people like my mom. Like they're going to be forced to be there to somebody who in her dying is so incredibly rude. Like you know the kind of person that spits in your face as you're feeding them soup while they're dying? That's what my older sister has been reduced to. She's been reduced to something so rude and so um, condescending. She is so incredibly condescending. So condescending. So condescending. She will speak to you like you are rubbish, like the bubble gum underneath her feet. Just to make herself feel better about losing everything. And mind you, this Harvard graduate that is losing everything is only losing everything because she has got this bad problem with alcohol where she walks, like I remember the other day when she walked past her, all I could think was she smells like cough syrup. She smells like cough syrup. The way that she reeks of alcohol. When she was newly living here, you would open the door in the evenings when all the windows and everything were closed. And the whole house would smell of alcohol just because of one person. I ended up opening windows in the kitchen just to make sure that some of that smell gets out. 
could not understand how in the world we're going to live like that. And I believe it's also one of the biggest reasons why my younger sister moved out. To live in a house, I live in a mkuku back here. This environment, uh, it, sh it shields me, it shelters me from lots of the noise in the house. In other words, lots of the activity, the commotion they're in, including whatever smells in that in ecosystem. But my, the, my mom's house does not smell until my sister came in. Yeah. These days we open the refrigerator and it reeks of uh, spilled wine. Like, you know, when you sp uh, spill uh, wine in a fridge, how it, that citrusy smell mixed with like uh, fermentation, uh, alcohol, what it smells like. Yeah, you kind of have to clean out the whole entire refrigerator. If you have had a bottle of alcohol break, burst in the deep freezer, you will know how it smells like literally for weeks. Our fridge now smells like that 24 hours a day. Our fridge smells like that because there's always some kind of concealed alcohol in some container likely that he's even falling on the surface that is go that causes everything to like whiff out come out of there we are no uga in the whole house and yeah not personally when she walks right by you and today in particular she reeked of cough syrup i was like oh it makes sense cough syrup there's like alcohol in there Every so often, cough syrup has got, you know, uh, concentrations of alcohol in there in order to cure you from whatever it is that is the bronchitis in your chest. Like, guys, it's problematic. And remember that story that I told you about my dad drinking all the alcohol in the bar? Well, my mom, just as usual, about, like, two Decembers ago, literally, one of her best friends that she bought some of that wine for has since then passed away. Like, she has since then died. I think it was two years ago when my mom's, uh, one, one, one of my mom's friends from coming up passed away. She passed away two years ago, meaning that she, for, from like a, a sickness, it was a long lingering illness. Like, I don't know if it was a cancer or a kidney uh, failure or whatever. And the Christmas prior to that, she spent it here. She was here with my mom. That woman was here with my mom, yet to be diagnosed, yet to basically face death. She has since then died. So it means that that alcohol has literally been chilling in that, that the, the, those two, you know, wine cellars, uh, like decoratively, that you would find in a kitchen. It's like those rings, the way you, it is that you just, you, you plonk wine in. There's two of them on the left and on the right of the kitchen. That's what's good. And that alcohol, those wine cellars, when my mom built them, she populated them with alcohol. I remember one particular Christmas when her friends were coming over, they did not drink all the alcohol and um, they have ever since then just kind of chilled. They, they've been there from three years ago two three years ago two three years ago there are wines that were chilling in the cellars more kitcheny that no one touched because ain't nobody here drink i don't drink personally my mom doesn't drink and if my little sister drinks she certainly does not touch the stash in the house and now today at on the 6th the 9th of february 2024 three years later from wine purchased even before covid 19 now it wasn't before COVID, was it before or after COVID when those wine cellar, because that, that whole structure was also built with a new whatever, maybe uh, just shortly after coronavirus, that's what's good. The Christmas afterwards, so what that would be like what, 2022, mm, 2021, 2021 to whatever, you get my point. Yeah, ever since basically shortly after COVID, um, after that year of COVID, we had wine is it let's say in Jefela populating that spot because my mom had entertained guests my uncle also drinks alcohol and his wife also every so often drinks alcohol and my uncle is quite the guzzler but he did, drinks more beer than he drinks wine and he's been here more recently like when south africa won the world cup he was here with his friends type establishment thing the rugby world cup and when my uncle is here maybe one or two of those bottles will disappear yeah one or two like literally just one or two my sister and then my mom would repopulate them because of the fact that she likes the aesthetic look of there being wine in wine holes do you understand what i'm saying gone literally i'm telling you it's the 9th of february and she started nibbling into that wine stash three days ago and all of them are gone on each side there could have been like maybe eight bottles of wine uh, each like eight holes one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight so they were in total eight times two that would be 16 bottles of wine in just three days they're all gone they're all gone first it was one little bottle that i would notice is missing and then she would replace it but now she is brazenly because my mom raised it that's the issue my mother was like you are going to kill yourself with all this alcohol and on top of that who do you think you're spiting with all of this drinking of alcohol it was precisely because my mom raised it that is a person that is walking in a, in a severity of spite do you understand but oh, it's like you're spiting you're biting your own nose to spite your face biting your nose to spite your face how's that gonna work out for you my mom was like i see that my wines are missing are going missing your liver is going to capitulate it's going to cave it's going to tank and after my mom basically raised it when she noticed one or two missing within the next day or two there would be literally something like three bottles per day 
gone and as at today this morning the last one was gone so i don't know how she's gonna keep on drinking or if she's gonna go to the store she's struggling with a phone at present buy a phone stop buying alcohol how much is why i don't know the last time i bought alcohol was literally over a decade ago i quit drinking even before i came to christ i didn't like it, it never sat on me i didn't like the feeling of babalas and all that jazz so i never really sat around in alcohol and i'm grateful for that because it's an issue in my family like there's a whole bunch of sprawled scattered alcoholics even in the extended family so I, I thoroughly do not know how much alcohol costs. I don't know what a bottle of vodka costs. I don't know what a bottle of wine costs anymore. I do even the cheapest ones. I can, I can, I can say inflation has ever since then, of course, ransacked the living delights out of everybody. And of course, the first place that is going that slaps, the, uh, sorry, the first um, goods that get slapped with inflation are sin taxes. So cigarettes and uh, alcohol tend to skyrocket by ridiculous double percentages whenever there's a severity of inflation in the country. And we all know what the South African economy is currently doing. So alcohol is probably really expensive. I don't know how much it is now because I don't drink and I'm not around people who drink either. Um, right. And I don't therefore frequent. I also don't frequent bottle stores for the sake of just checking out prices. Right. I don't know how much it is, but I would imagine that one bottle of wine might be just under 100 Rand if you're going cheap one bottle of whiskey vodka likely maybe like 120 bucks maybe more i don't know you tell me and if at all in any given week you've literally got like three of those bottles in your stash why aren't you buying a cheap phone at macro why aren't you buying like her whole phone is cracked up it's torn up from the flow up it's got like a screen issue and i gave her recommendations telling her buy something cheap for now until you can get yourself the kind of phone that you want when you get your life back together again when you get back on your feet again and this she keeps on buying alcohol she keeps on reeking of it now she's stealing from her mom's stash and she does not want to buy a phone and so like proper like you you need a phone to get job interviews you need a phone to we have basic things and you don't even have a phone i can't give you mine because uh, as soon as this phone is out of the charger it dies that's why i have to keep on walking around with a charger all over the show the only phone that i had there was a time when she wanted to hold on to it because apparently i'm doing nothing with my life i was like ah uh, this hand-me-down phone i basically had to wait nami a very long amount of time for a phone that does not need to constantly be plugged into a charger for it to work you can't just take mine because you think i'm going nowhere plus i use it i have a schedule a routine and I use it to record my videos and what have you on it. So she can continue to waste her money on alcohol. That is a self-destructive character. That is uh, anti-preservationist. Human beings are born inherently self-preserving. And so when somebody's walking so antagonized to their preservation, they are demon-possessed. They are taking from within a person. Something has been stolen from them. The image of God is being extracted from out of them. Something is, uh, basically they lack autonomy. This person is without control. She can't help herself. She cannot help herself. Because of demons. They have taken over. And every time they see a Christian spirit filled human being. They're like what do you want with us. And so they manifest. So they manifest. I literally attempted suicide. About 2-3 weeks ago. Because this woman pushed me to the edge. And if it was not for me coming up with a plan. By the Holy Spirit. To basically wear these things. Every time I go in the house. Uh, there is a show on Netflix called Snow Piercer. I uh, I watched it like it's in Kale. I finished the last season, season three, I believe. In Snowpiercer, the whole world is frozen to an icicle, and when you go outside, you freeze immediately because the temperatures are violently low, like minus like 100 uh, or 200, 300, 400 degrees Celsius. Like it's really bad. It's really super duper cold. Um, in that environment. So in order for you, for people to go outside and snow pierce, they have to wear a suit. They have to wear some kind of a suit to make sure that they don't die out in the ice. Because the moment you just put your hand out, your finger out, it'll freeze until it can be broken off your body. Yeah, I feel like I am living inside Snowpiercer and every time I go in the house, I gotta wear a suit. Otherwise, it's gonna be so Antarctic that I might be frozen to death. My older sister has made this house like the, 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 the center of the Arctic Circle. She's made it so cold. She's made it so uninhabitable that if I don't go in there wearing a suit of sorts, I will freeze to death. And my suit are these earphones and i cannot merely wear them and play a video on youtube or music largely it's music because a video sometimes it's a person talking and you can hear what's being said in the outward environment i need it to be music it has to be music it has to be pumping and i have to know the lyrics of that song why because i need to be able to sing along i need to be able to sing along at the top of my voice and the i like proper hey now hey now what's the matter with the girls we just want to have fun now i have to do that because she's still here when I've got these earphones in my ear. She is still here with the earphones in my ear. The other day she tried to yank it out and I hit her. She literally provoked me to hitting her. And then she was like, oh, I realized that all one time. At least her, you are not going to yank my earphones out. Because these here are my hazmat suit in the center of a very icy cold environment. You have made this house uninhabitable. She has made my mom cornered like a rodent that you are busy hitting with a broom in a kitchen. 
did not expect my mom to ever be subdued to all that level of tyranny. And now I, therefore, if my mom is scrimmaging in a corner, cornered by my older sister, it means that I ain't got no protection. I can't ask my mom, please talk to her to stop yelling at me, to stop talking smack to me, to stop say, basically saying rubbish. Like the other day she jumped me because I grabbed, my mom went on holiday not long ago with my younger sister. And during that time when it was dirty in the house, I would pick up a broom, etc. One day the floor was so dirty and I don't know how in the world one person can muddy a house that much that I went and I grabbed a whole vacuum cleaner and I, I started to clean. And she was like, do you have to do that? I'm busy, don't you see? I, I'm, I'm, you, I'm watching the tele, I'm like, woman, your mother's coming back tomorrow. And when she comes back and finds the house like this, I'm also going to be the collateral damage of being yelled at. So please, I got a vacuum and I'm going to vacuum whether or not you like it. I went on right ahead to vacuum and that whole day she was on my case about how I'm worthless. I don't pay bills. I don't do nothing. I've lost everything. And that then also then brought back these. Because every so often I get relief, the, the temperatures rise, the sun rises in that very cold Antarctic environment and she shuts up and says nothing to me when I walk into the room. But other days in Jafala I'll be washing the dishes and then she'll start talking about how You're wasting, first you waste uh, the gas and now you waste, and I'm like whoa, she's at it again. So I have to quickly run this side and grab my hazmat suit, go in the house and then start singing Same bed but it feels just a little bit bigger now of the Mar song on the radio but it don't sound the same when our friends talk about it all it does is just tear me down and my heart spins a little when I hear your name it all just sounds like Ooh. I will sing at the top of my voice and then she will eventually shut up and then you will know that she is shut up and she's capitulated and given up because she cannot get all of the vitriol into my heart and therefore break it and therefore cause me so much despair that I won't know whether I'm coming or going that I will hear the television volume literally be raised to maximum telling me that Wang Rasa TV and I'm like I would not have had a need to sing Bruno Mars so loud. I would not have had a need to do that if you were not telling me what a worthless woman I am. I'm already suffering. I'm already going through a lot. I've already lost everything. I don't need you telling me I'm the scum of the earth and I'm going absolutely nowhere. I literally don't. Like when you make an observation of yourself ending up like someone that you saw die alone and with everybody irritated at him all the way up until his death. Why? Why under heaven are you gliding swimmingly, swimmingly into that future? Why are you taking yourself into that future? Why, when you have an example to look back at, are you gliding into that space? I guess my dad did the same thing. With my father, his mom was like that. His mom was the one that squandered the inheritance of the whole family. His, his dad was wealthy. So therefore, the mom was a rich wife, if you want to call it that. And when my dad's dad passed away, the mother drank the family's wealth away. And at her death, my dad was mad at her. He was angry, he was livid, he was wuss at her for squandering the family's inheritance with alcohol. And then my dad went and did the same thing. He did the same thing. Like when you see things happening and you just choose them, you are obviously demon possessed. And now my father, not my father, my, my um, sister is continuing that legacy. It's a generational curse. And these demons are literally singing, we ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. Cause they were in my dad's mom, then in my dad. And now they're in my sister. And they are like, Asambi, we are not going anywhere. And so all they can do is persecute me. All they can do is persecute me. And my sister made a decision to go and grab an additional entity or additional batch of entities by dabbling in sorcery. So it's not just alcohol. Now it's alcohol with sorcery. So if this thing is lingered, if it carries on into the future and into the future and into the future through children, you must understand the kids are going to be even worse. I can say more now, but already mixed the alcohol, drugs and witchcraft. And maybe even prostitution. I don't know. Just a combination of somebody that is an, a great human being, being squandered, literally laying destitute and wasted by alcohol, by demons, by demon possession that is so anti-preservationist, like literally stealing, killing and destroying a whole entire thriving human being and leaving them destitute to the abyss. I don't know where my dad is still to this day. And as if my dad went to heaven or not, because unlike my sister who completely vehemently and violently and abruptly without even trying to hear it for a single second, rejects Jesus in the worst way. I have tried. My dad, however, was always all up in that Bible. He was always all up in preaching. He had all different kinds of Bibles, even African Soto Tswana Zulu. He had all different kinds of translations in different languages. So he was trying. So I would imagine that maybe at the end of his life, he was like, I've lived a worthless life. And like the thief on the cross perhaps repented. My sister, however, is facing death and the abyss because of the way that she so vehemently rejects Jesus. So she's worse than my dad in literally the worst way.
There is no way that this woman is coming out of this. I fought through Christ. Mother, the way ang ang tang rabbers ang kating. The way she persecutes the only Christian in her environment, Kateng. Oh, God, see. She's in danger with Jesus because of the way she's treating me. She's putting my life in danger. I literally nearly committed suicide. I put my sock in my exhaust fume for crying out loud and tried to go out as carbon monoxide. And God kept on spitting it out and got a little bit of a pacifier. Dabi mo mo You know, little bit When a child's tongue, when it's spitting out a, um, a bottle because it's full, it doesn't want to eat anymore. Yeah, that's how that sock kept on getting like expelled out of my exhaust fume when I tried to commit suicide. I literally, for the first time in all of this entire season, that I've been suffering. I tried to commit suicide because of Kate. The whole time I've been freaking strong until recently. That's what this woman is all up in my grill. She's freaking dangerous. So if I don't walk out of the snow piercer wearing a hazmat suit, it's I'm done for. So I gotta go and go, oh yeah, we wanna have fun. And right now, you heard how she was literally trying to break this door even though it is locked. Trying to open and telling me to shut up. She's itching. She's itching. Literally, her demons are like, what do you want with us, son of man? And I gotta deal with all that and my mom can do nothing for me. My mother, in and of herself, her hands are tied. Alling demon possessed. And then naked lies and games are lying. I'm a Christian. I'm not about to stop being one. And on top of I feel sometimes I feel like it's my fault that she's manifesting so badly. Because she would not have manifest like this if it wasn't for me. If it wasn't for my Holy Spirit. And now I'm fasting for the sake of my own life and recovering it. And she's manifesting even more hard knock. Must I now stop fasting so she can manifest less? I'm sorry. I have breakthrough to achieve now in and of myself. And if I don't fast, I also don't get out from under the tyranny of whatever under heaven it is that she is. One day she's going to break this door down and guess who's going to have to pay to fix it? My mom. My mom. Let's move to the next part and continue to speak about this.